Are you ready to vie for control as leader of a guild in an unknown land as you attempt to gain reputation and supremacy? Well, in the game, Edge of Darkness by AEG, designed by John DeClaire, that's exactly what you'll be doing. This is a one to four player board game where you're going to take control of a guild and basically improve on its reputation and of course its members. You will all be working together, sort of, in a way where you're going to be gathering cards from a specific street area Area and uh, bringing them into your guild, hopefully getting them to join you and fighting not only the players in forms of reputation and points overall, but also against the denizens of the uh, location or the area. You'll be fighting them and of course building your reputation as a guild, acquiring new members, and preventing your opponents from doing the same. Will you gather the most points by the end of eight rounds before any other player? Find out in this massive crazy card crafting system of a game, much like the game Mystic Veil, vale, Edge of Darkness. Additionally, of course, there's expansions and there's going to be a new Kickstarter out soon, which is why I'm doing this video. As you can see, this game is a massive game with a ton of different components. And if you back the Kickstarter, you're going to get all the additional components that are basically going to be plastic pieces, whether it be reputation or coins or even player markers or memory markers, I should say, and even just the basic uh, like strength of your keep. Player boards are double thick and all of the components, as you can see, are laid out on the table with some exceptions. I took aside at some of the uh, lesser, like high-end quality products that you'd be getting if you just bought the base game without anything else from Kickstarter, maybe you bought it from like a local Target or a Walmart. And uh, I also have an expansion that I'm not gonna be showing out here, but I will explain the basics of the game, how you set it up and how you play. To start off, each player is gonna get their own unique player board. They're also going to get four of their members of guilds, the, of their members in their guild, they're gonna be trained and you're gonna set the extra six aside. You're gonna get a certain number of cards that are going to have a sleeve and you'll be placing your cards into these guys and you'll of course have your uh, red border on the cards that are yours. And you're additionally gonna get extra cards that you can add to sleeves that will basically turn cards that are originally neutral into cards of your faction that when you use them, you're going to put them in the discard pile, but when somebody else does, they're going to give them to you, which will give you benefits throughout the game as well as additional cards. <laughs> You're also gonna start off with a certain amount of currency. I think everybody starts off with five money and four reputation. Reputation's gonna be used in the streets area that let you gather cards as you're crafting your deck or the deck of the game. Because unlike a game like Mystic Veil vale, where you kind of build your own deck in this card crafting system, uh, separate from all the other players, in this game, the deck collides with all the other players' decks and there's the discard, there's the main deck, and then there's the cards in the guild that you use on your turn. There's also going to be additional locations on the board as you can see and the game comes with a whole bunch of them and these boards are all utilized with them. There's also, uh, there's gonna be, uh, I guess, board extensions that you can attach to the game as well if you want an even larger playing area. But if you can't do that, if you don't have a big enough space, then you can actually com you know, compartmentalize and, and shorten it up so you can place your cards on these spaces instead. And each of these spaces also tells you what the cards do with a little extra detail. And um, there also is going to be this street deck. There's gonna be neutral cards, unlike the cards you start with. And they're all set up a certain way as well. And you're gonna place out five down here on the board. These are what you're going to be doing to draft the game. All the extra components, whether it be money or um, whether it be reputation, etc., will be in these three little, little tins here. Everybody's gonna start off with 17 defense with our marker up there, and one player will get the starting player token or marker that's gonna be rotating from round to round. And on your turn, it's really simple. You're gonna first start off with the assembly phase. Uh, in the first round of the game, there's actually a prologue to the game, which is why you have this character on the prologue to start before you start the eight rounds of the game, finally concluding at round eight. And uh, after you finish the prologue, which is explained in the rules, it kind of adds a couple little things about how you draft and how you set the game up, as well as, of course, this tower here. But you're gonna move into the phases that I'm gonna explain here. If you want a more in-depth rule summary, I'll have a link down below in the description that explains the entire game, or word for word, basically, in the rule book in a very well-detailed manner, which is how I first learned how to play the game myself, even though the rules aren't hard to follow either. First, all players take all cards out of their guild hall and place them uh, in their hand on the table, okay? Uh, and then next, players take all the cubes from their threat zone and place them on those cards separate. Because when you place anything else additionally in your guild area or in your threat zone, that'll be for next round. 
Then, in turn order, draft cards from the street. You'll be able to draft these cards here, basically allowing you to place these guys into your hand, and then, uh, or, yeah, basically allowing you to place these guys into your hand, utilizing them for the prologue, or placing them over here for round to round. These guys all have unique abilities that will allow you to gather currency, allow you to defend against monsters, go on the hunt with, with monsters, and a bunch of other things that will increase your influence and, uh, and uh, different types of currency throughout the game. You'll also be placing your guild patrons down on each of the different boards in the map that will associate in some way with that space and when you use cards of that type. Uh, after you've done that, you'll count all the threat cubes on the cards in your hand and place those cubes uh, out of the bag and place them into the threat, uh, either your threat zone. So sometimes when you buy cards, they'll have numbers on them. This says three, so you'll take three cubes from the bag and you'll place them in your threat zone. So pick up the cards you want up to a total of three in your hand, then take the cubes from the bag, place them in their threat zone based on the cards that you chose. After each player does that, you'll move on to the action phase, which is where all the action takes place. It's where the main action aspect of the game takes place as well. You'll drop the cubes that are on your cards from your hand into this wonderful little 3D model here. And there's three different areas they can go in, and each of the areas are represented by monsters that are going to be uh, things that you have to deal with throughout the game. And when, of course, they perish, you'll get new ones from the bottom of the deck, and you'll rinse and repeat. You'll go back and forth fighting these monsters. But only when a certain number of cubes hits, hits each of these areas. And based on whoever has the most cubes of their color in that area, or if there's a tie, those monsters will fight those players. If, however, there are no blight attacks, these being blight monsters, you'll move on to the next phase of the game, and uh, you'll be able to choose any one advancement uh, from this area here and place it into one of the neutral cards or cards that you have available to you from your hand. Uh, after that, you'll use all your location abilities and resolve all contact effects. Each of your cards have unique abilities that you can do by placing characters down, gathering currency, getting yourself protected against fights, or gaining attack to deal with monsters. You can also discard a card, that way it would allow you to take one of your characters back and put it into your trained agents area, or you can discard two cards, if you don't want to use those cards for some reason, to use any one specific action on the board. And finally, you'll discard all the cards in your hand, um, and, and or give the cards that were owned by other players back to that player's guild hall, and then the rest will go to the discard pile, and you'll once again rinse and repeat this aspect of the game. You'll have basically two player references, one explaining what I just explained to you by reading this guy here, and the other explaining not only scoring, but all the effects that take place on the board here, and the fact that all these different unique boards will have certain different um, uh, scenarios you can take place in. This is, of course, the basic scenario, which comes with all the base cards, but there are a ton of extra cards that you can utilize in the game, with the extra boards that will basically change the way you play uh, Edge of Darkness. There is a lot that goes into this game. It's fairly complex, uh, but the way in which you take turns is pretty straightforward. It's one of those uh, uh, medium games as far as gameplay, but heavy as far as strategy. This game's got a ton of strategy and a ton of beautiful components. But anyway, that's the basic idea of how you play just the basic scenario of the game. Of course, it comes with a ton of extra rule books and scenario booklets that will let you have a vast variety of different choices. There's story to the game, and of course the expansion, which brings even more content to the game. But nevertheless, like I said, that's a basic scenario of how to play the game. There's a ton of little bits and pieces I didn't talk about, and if you want, down below is going to be in the description a way in which you can read the rules fully if you buy this game, and so you'll understand every little piece of complexity as far as playing Edge of Darkness. So I sat down and I started playing Edge of Darkness, reading the rules, and it was uh, rough for me to start with understanding each of the rules. It's very well laid out and detailed and explained pretty well, um, and as I go through it, it made sense. For me though, as a more visual learner when it comes to uh, watching a video as opposed to the rule book, I actually usually tend to read the rules all the way through, and then I'll watch a video if I still don't understand it. And it did take me uh, having to watch the video I linked down below to explain the game fully. Then when I went back into the rule book, I understood it and I could gather the complete complexities of the game as well. Uh, that being said, the game's quality is excellent. The artwork is beautiful. The card crafting system is just as cool as Mystic Veil vale and a couple of his other games out there that do the card crafting system. I've explained my love of the card crafting system before, being able to basically take cards and add new cards from certain areas and place them into the specific uh, cards here, basically allowing you to have a stronger card as the game continues. What's unique about this game specifically, as opposed to something like Mystic Veil, vale, is that everybody plays 
the same deck of cards, but gathers those cards into their hand and utilizes them. And if it's their faction, uh, basically it's going to uh, hopefully be getting into other players' hands so that they have to utilize them, thusly giving you bonuses. So you work together, but you're not actually working together to beat the game. Um, of course, there's also monsters you have to deal with, and sometimes it'll just hit you or another player. Maybe you want that to happen if it's not you, but sometimes it might be a tie. And dealing with a monster might uh, be worth working with somebody else, so you can defeat that monster. Maybe they'll come back and repay you. There's a little bit of cooperation in this game as you attempt to deal with everything, which is kind of an interesting little nuance thing that isn't normally in the card crafting games. Most of them are kind of more solitaire-like, but this one has a little more player interaction, a little more social um, perspective to the game, which I like. All of the extra high quality components are not necessarily a must, but for me personally, something a must have, for me personally. <laughs> but you can get away with just playing the cardboard ones and they are actually very nice. But I just like the extra little plastic uh, tokens, there's metal tokens as well. All the miniatures are beautifully detailed. And of course this tower is wonderful. I even actually went ahead and painted it. I had so much fun with it. Bag is nice, standard high quality, but of course over time it does start getting cracks in it. And uh, the board is rather huge. This game is a massive game. This is the reduced size of the game, so it can get even bigger if you want to add the extra little layers of, of, of the place where you place the cards. For me personally, those aren't needed. I just place them directly on top of the locations. That way I can see the ability and what the location does as well in the same space. But I guess if you have a larger table and you just want to have a more larger grandiose presence of the game, you can include those as well. Uh, the game's uh, complexity gets pretty in depth as you continue trying to remember what cards you played, what cards you kept in your guild because they all go to the same deck. Gets a little, not frustrating, but you're having to kind of keep this memory thing going on where which cards do I want or I'm building this card to eventually be able to put my faction into it, which will then give me the ability to give it to somebody else hopefully and they'll use that card because it's so good benefiting me. But on other times, I'm like, actually I'm building this card for me and the point, the point of the game is to get this, these reputation points and to get points at the end of the game based on each of the different categories. So I kind of want that card for my personal self, which is why I built it up. And so it's kind of a double-edged sword in certain aspects. Uh, and you kind of have to think and, and maintain as much control over not only your guild, but what your other opponents are doing, what monsters are coming out, and what cubes are hitting your threat pool as they drop into this little area here. And this is super fun, dropping these guys down and having them land in certain areas, thusly randomly triggering battles. It adds a little bit of randomness to a game that's almost never random, minus shuffling the deck. This kind of creates this suspense that pushes throughout the game. And I like suspense in my games. I don't like a lot of randomness, and this just gives me just enough of randomness where I enjoy it. It's something kind of like a Mystic Veil as far as what cards come out in the deck. And this one here adds that pirate theme game, which includes the card crafting combat system of randomness as they drop out. Instead of in that game, you're shooting cubes into the locations trying to score points. This one's more about when monsters are gonna hit you and who and what targets and when, and I dig that. If you don't mind a large game, you don't mind going through the rules and learning the game by either watching the video or reading throughout the rules, uh, this game is a solid pickup for the card crafting systems. If you like Mystic Veil, this one is definitely different and definitely can belong in your collection. It's not so close where you're like, which one do I decide from? They are separate. The only thing really, really like situationally similar is of course the system in which you put the cards in, which if you've actually played those games, it'll make it easier to understand this one here. Then again, if you are interested in all those I have talked about, you don't mind the fact that the game is massive, you don't mind the rules, this is something I personally really, really like. More players is better in my opinion. There's a solo player variant, but I've played it once. I prefer playing with the larger, if, I, if I'm setting a game out that takes me like 25 minutes to set up, which this one does for me, then I want to basically be playing with as many players as possible with the craziness and the monsters and all the different cubes that come out. I want to experience it in that way. Edge of Darkness is a solid, recommendation for me personally. It's going to get my seal of approval and my strong suggestion to check out the Kickstarter campaign coming out soon. And when it does, I'll have a link in the description for that. But for now, there will just be a link for not only the rules video, but also to purchase Edge of Darkness. AEG, John DeClaire, you guys killed it once again. I love the card crafting system and this one is no exception. Thank you guys for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Edge of Darkness. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. You can also go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that bell notification button. It does greatly help us out here. We do greatly appreciate it. As well as, of course, the link is where you can pick up the games. I've mentioned it a bunch of times. I want you to know. Don't forget. 
but I want you to subscribe more. Yes, I need more people. I want you, if you guys like this, there's more stuff to come. Our live streams are every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like this one on live stream. Then we upload them the next day on YouTube if you didn't miss the live stream. We're giving away games on the stream and we have a sponsor now that's going to be including some unique dice and other different types of accessories and whatnot and even an additional one that might be including other dice. So buying from them uh, for after winning the giveaway or if you don't win, that helps us as well. And the main thing, Patreon. Yes, even a buck a month. We do greatly appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Uh, the people who have stuck with us for so long, it is super greatly appreciated. You guys don't even understand how much we thoroughly appreciate your support. Regardless though, Moonshell is coming along right now. It's in production. As soon as it's finished, there'll be pictures out on the Moonshell Discord area, as well as of course on the notifications. And if you haven't seen Moonshell, you should definitely take a look at Callie's game on Kickstarter. Thank you guys as much as, as, much as always. And uh, of course, I look forward to seeing you next time.